In 2023, Tudor surprised their watch fans with a completely new lineup, which they called the Black Bay 54. Similar to the Black Bay 58, the release was a massive hit, and people can't seem to stop talking about it. In fact, I ran a poll in the community section, and the Black Bay 54 and a new Black Bay lineup came up neck to neck as your favourite Tudor releases in 2023. But I do have mixed feelings about this new Black Bay 54 though. Let's talk about it. As usual, let's start with the specifications. This Black Bay 54 comes in a 37mm case, it is 11mm thick, and has a lug to lug distance of 46mm. Hidden within the case is the Tudor in house movement with up to 70 hours of power reserve. It has a screwed down crown, and it is water resistant up to 200 meters. Tudor currently only offers this Black Bay 54 in one color, and it is a classic dive watch style with a black aluminum bezel insert. There are two bracelet configuration options though, you can either get it on an oyster style steel bracelet for £3,200, or opt in for the rubber strap option, which would set you back £3,030. Now let's compare the Black Bay 54 with the Black Bay 58. Specifications aside, there are still quite a lot of similarities between the two watches. They are both simple three-handed time only watches, both the 54 and the 58 are a dive watch, which can resist up to 200 meters. And both watches offer a vintage vibe where the bracelet has faux rivets to complement the gilt dial. Apart from these similarities, the Black Bay 54 and the Black Bay 58 are two very different watches. The first thing you will notice is that the Black Bay 54 looks quite a bit smaller than the Black Bay 58. And that is because the 54 is 2mm smaller, coming in a 37mm case. The difference feels quite substantial when you put the two watches side by side, but when you put the 54 on the wrist, it does wear very similar to my beloved Black Bay 58. Please don't rule out the 54 purely based on the 37mm diameter on paper. If you are worried about the size, I would suggest you to check out the 54 in person. You might be in for a surprise. You will also notice that the crown on the Black Bay 54 is smaller than the Black Bay 58. Tudor made this change so that the crown is proportional to the thinner case profile of the 54. I think it gives the Black Bay 54 a more refined look, but unfortunately it does make the crown a bit more difficult to operate compared to the Black Bay 58. In terms of the bracelet, both the 54 and the 58 have a step style taper which I'm not a huge fan of, and like I've said before, the 54 still has the faux rivets. But the Black Bay 54 does offer one big advantage, and that's the inclusion of a T-fit adjustment system, meaning that users can now adjust the bracelet size on the fly without the use of any tool. This is Tudor's answer to the biggest complaint people have on the Black Bay 58, as the 58 only comes with a simple pin adjustment system, and even then, there are only three micro-adjustment positions, which makes it quite an outdated bracelet in modern standards. Having the T-Fit system is a massive upgrade to the bracelet, and it makes the Black Bay 54 a much more practical watch to wear on a daily basis. Other improvement the 54 has over the 58 is the thickness. I mean, the Black Bay 58 is already a thin watch, especially in the dive watch bucket. But it looks like Tudor has taken the Black Bay 54 to a whole other level. By way of comparison, the Black Bay 58 is 11.6mm thick, and the Black Bay 54 is 11mm thick. Although it doesn't sound like much on paper, the 54 does wear a lot thinner than the 58. And friends, this is as far as the positive points go. There are quite a few things I like about the BB58 which the 54 lacks. Before I move on, please give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This will help the channel grow and I can make more content like this for you in the future. Now let's move on to something that is more subjective. There are three things about the 54 that I am not a fan of. Let's start with the bezel insert. My first complaint is the black and white color scheme. Unlike the Black Bay 58, which has a gilt touch, the bezel insert of the 54 is in black and white. Given both the 54 and the 58 have a gilt dial, I think the black and white bezel insert of the 54 doesn't go too well with the dial. It almost feels like the 54 bezel has been misplaced from another watch by mistake. Then it is the minute graduation on the bezel. Unlike the Black Bay 58, you will notice the 54 does not have the minute markers in the first 15 minutes. On one hand, this makes the 54 a lot cleaner, but I think Tudor has gone too far and together with the black and white bezel insert, it makes the 54 a much more boring watch to look at compared to the 58. Look, I'm not a diver and I would never use the minute track on the bezel, but I would still prefer to have this detail to give the watch a little bit of an extra touch. 
Then it is the second hand, in line with the rest of the 2023 new releases from Tudor. The second hand of the 54 now features a circular loom pot. The 58, however, has a snowflake loom. I think the snowflake second hand found on the Black Bay 58 matches the snowflake hour hand better than the circular loom found on the 54, so I do prefer the look of the 58. You will also notice a difference on the dial finish of the two watches. The 58 has a matte texture, whereas the 54 has a sunray finish. If you're not a fan of sunray finishes, don't worry, Tudor has made it very subtle on the 54. It is nowhere as obvious as the sunray dial Tudor put on their Black Bay lineup. I've done a couple of videos on the 2023 Black Bay by the way, I'll leave a link on the top right hand side of your screen if you are interested. Look, I get it, it seems like the direction Tudor is going with for this Black Bay 54 is to make it more refined, and together with a smaller size, it could appeal to more people, including women. By adding a sunray finish to the 54, it does help to make the watch a bit more dressy, but I'm not a huge fan of this move because it's supposed to be a dive watch after all. I do prefer the dial finish found on the 58, which is a lot more toolish in my opinion. Now let's see a side-by-side -side comparison between the 54 and the 40mm Maxi Case Rolex Samariner. The 54 definitely looks and wears much smaller than the Samariner. I mean, the Black Bay 54 is 3mm smaller in size after all, so it is expected, and the Maxi Case of the sub doesn't help either. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison between the Black Bay 54, the 2023 Black Bay Red, and the 40mm Maxi Case Rolex Samariner. I'm happy to report that the 54 is the thinnest watch out of the three, and I think it is also the most comfortable watch to wear out of the three watches here. Aside from the T-Fit feature, thickness is another big positive which makes the Black Bay 54 such a great watch to wear on a daily basis. I have asked you guys to tell me what you think of the Black Bay 54 on my IG. Let's take a look at some of the comments I received. Overhyped. It is sad, but I do agree. When the Black Bay 58 was released, there was a lot of hype, but I think it was well justified. The 58 is a lot thinner than the Black Bay Heritage, and the 39mm case size is almost perfect for most people. But the incremental change this Black Bay 54 offers compared to the existing watches are not so significant. I'm actually quite disappointed at this release myself, if I'm honest. A true vintage homage. Fair enough, but at least it is being a homage to itself and not copying from other brands, I guess. Stealing the spotlight of Tudor BB with Metis, you are correct, and this is also reflected in the poll I ran earlier. The new Black Bay Red doesn't seem to get as much attention as the Black Bay 54. My personal favourite this year is actually the Black Bay 31, 36, 39, 41 lineup, and I have very little interest in the 54 and the Black Bay Red myself. So comfortable. You are right, with a smaller case, a thinner profile, and together with a T-fit to fine-tune the bracelet, the Black Bay 54 is indeed a very comfortable watch. BB36 with a dive bezel. You would be technically correct if the BB36 can resist up to 200 meters. Likewise, you are right on point here. Smaller than 58. Well, yes, by definition. But you will be surprised by how similar they look after you put them on your wrist. By far the best in Tudor collection. This is a bold claim, but not for me. My favourite is still the BB58, but this may change in the future. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to see a review on the brand new 2023 Black Bay Red, you should check out this video where I discuss it in detail. Cheers!